Now a three-point attempt. Yep, that's sweet. They really do help your scoring rate. Crawford was being well guarded, but still scored. Well guarded on that occasion by Davies, but he was able to negotiate him eventually. And Carfino was using his speed well. Carfino getting around Davis without much trouble. The hot and cold in Davies tried the three-pointer several times. Finally, he got it right. Davies, Spaldinus inside. Oh, nice shot. Now, the James Crawford turn. Piper's there as well. Crawford, a little turnaround jump shot. Oh, that's sweet. And visiting coach Claude Williams wasn't all that happy. You see Claude Williams, you heard him being told, back to your bench. But he needn't have worried. The Kings drew level with a great fast break. Here's that man, Carfino, once again. Has Morrissey to the right. That's where it goes. Excellent work from the Kings, and we've got a ball game. And Carfino again give the Kings the first half lead. Here comes Carfino. Svaldena streaking up the right wing. Good work. Sydney tired and made mistakes. Pinder made it level. That's a bad mistake. Tiny Pinder makes the play. Coach Bruton was great under pressure. Out to Bruton. Three-point attempt from the Cats, once they got in front, were happy to just run the clock down. That's an intentional foul, but the ball game's over. The ball game is over. No time left. Let's see whether the foul is called. It's called an intentional foul. Lucas, Arnie Duncan, working his way baseline, gets past Watterson and Pinder, and two points, 52 makes 43. Kuiper turns, jumps. Whoa! Oh, he's living right. Oh, Paul Kuiper's living real well. He'll be in church tomorrow. Only his second NBL game, and he fouls out. James Crawford isn't. He's still shooting through. Spencer once again. Three-point attempt. Oh, yes! Now that is sweet. Now that really helps Scott Spencer's confidence right here. Duncan, close to the baseline, gets it back to Yukov, who has it taken away from him by Crawford. Yukov appealing for a foul, wasn't forthcoming. Fenton gets it to Pinder, Pinder from just inside the three-point line. He hits it and makes no mistake. The margin is now 11 points, seven and a half. Inside Melbourne Spectres, gets it inside the Kuiper, surrounded by Tall Temper and gets above the trees as well. Good move by you. Ellis lays it back to Tiny Pinder. Nice work by Ellis, great follow through Tiny Pinder. Say goodnight, nurse. There's a real clash of bodies. Now, who had position? Great to sit down the score at that point. Okay, here's Tiny running. Now, Tiny did not see Utah. You'll see he'll make the play and run directly into Utah. There you see Tiny Pinder. I think he's been winded, as one might expect. It'd be a little bit like being hit by the Australind Express, I would think. <laughs> James Crawford, what can he do? Finds Ellis, three-point attempt. Yes, sir! Mike Ellis has been shooting well extremely. as Kuiper goes to the basket and he makes it now 18 points the margin 70 plays 52 we've got five minutes left Ron Lemons haven't seen much of him in the last 10 or 12 minutes well it's getting on behind the play now Mike Ellis and Lucas and that is really silly that started, started, over, started yeah. over an incident in which Lucas raised his boot on Ellis Tiny Pinder, that's if it was a foul. Levens obviously didn't think it was. Scott Fenton hangs in the big three-point clock. Now Brute, three-point attempt. Yo! Three more to the Wildcats. Levens, the three-point attempt. Yep, makes good. St. James Crawford almost swatted it away. Duncan tries again. Can he try again? Well, you can't get much of a shot from there, but by G, he got the pass to crawling. Now that's strong work. Crawford cutting through the keyway and making good the turnaround jumper. 98 plays 77. Bateman opened the second half well for the Hawks. That's a good shot from Jim Bateman. And then with great defensive play, Ellis managed to beat the two on one. Two on one. Gaspar and McLeod, and it's broken up by Ellis. McLeod was using his speed to great advantage. McLeod again, driving in. Rockets another two. Big man Paul Kuiper was coming into his own. The Wildcats try and break this game up, but Kuiper under the basket turns and makes it for two. And then the clash of the Giants. Kuiper crashes through. One is into Kuiper. Kuiper drives in. They come crashing down. And the two points to stand. Pinder was shooting well from the outside. Yeah, this is Pinder. Pinder set for the shot and makes it. And how's this for a good move? Chuck Hammerston. Hammerston. Nice move, Hammerston. Little hook puts it in. 
Crawford was great under pressure. Makes the basket, Crawford, clock restarts, Crawford gets the shot away quickly, and he makes it. And the crowd was obviously appreciating the night's entertainment. Silverdrome waves. Fenton came on and scored with a great turnaround jumper. As did Pinder, eventually Fenton puts the next shot up, and the points are good, 68 plays. Hubbard was still shooting well from the outside. Hubbard with the shot, it's a good one too. Tiny Pinder showed why he's one of the top perimeter shooters in the game. This is Pinder, two point attempt, right on the line, makes it. And then the assist of the night and the goal of the night, all in one. All the rebound comes to Brute. Fast break, Brute, no support. Yes, there is. Pinder inside. Far break, Nicholson back to Crawford. And then right on quarter time, another clash. Two seconds. Will Bruton get it up? The referee has called a foul and it's been called on Bateman. And at worst it'll be one and one. This foul spelled the end of Bickett, who was just recalled to the Hawks side. The big man Borner was doing well off the glass. Borner, nice move, Borner off the glass, makes the two points. And how's this for super speed from Trevor Torrance? Tapped down nicely by the Wildcats on the fast break. Right again. Torrance makes the two points. As the game progressed, Crawford got even better. Now Crawford hangs in the air and gets the two. Well, Black was good with the three-pointer. Three-point attempt, and it's good. Johnson came on and found immediate touch. All night, there's another lovely shot from Johnson, who's found right. He's and then the slammer again. Gets it to Crawford, and the Alabama slammer stops it in the basket. Captain McLeod was doing everything for the Hawks. McLeod, meantime, is going berserk at Sid Stevens. I didn't see what that was. With 25 seconds to play, Bateman travels. What a crucial mistake. Had to shoot soon, the travel is called. What a time to travel, poor old Jim Bateman. And on the buzzer, Pinder scores to give the Cats an eight-point win and send them back to the top of the ladder. Alan Black. Turns on Graham. Oh, nice pass. Fourth foul for James Crawford. Matters not, the crowd is going for zero. If the Wildcats win this game, they should buy 5,400 drinks on the way out. Dylan makes good. And we've got a tied ball game. Here's the press again, no Dave. Happened. The Wildcats one point up. One and one. Still in the foul. One and one. The Wildcats with the opportunity Five to shoot fouls well. on Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon. Fifth foul for Tim Dillon. Okay. Let's see it. Here's Mike Ellis trying to get around the right baseline. Wildcats are in their sprint or delayed game. They're going to wait to the uh, last couple of seconds on the 30 seconds clock elapse and throw up a shot. There goes the shot from Crawford. Oh, there it is. The goes for so the Wildcats breaking up. Bruce Palmer and his assistant coach, Bruce Carl Bruton, exhorting this crowd. Come on, he says, do it some more. He knows just how to get a crowd to laugh and he knows what it can do for his team. If he misses this one, the rebound is just as important. There are 20 seconds left on this clock. Listen to that crowd. The Wildcats can walk it away. The Wildcats can walk it away. Have a look at Tony Pinder go. Walk it down, say the crowd. Just walk it down. The former Highland Road sort of loses it. Seven seconds. No fouls now from the Wildcats. Lead a three-point attempt. Hey, misses. Now that is the ball game, that is going to be the ball game. That's the end of the ball game, Wildcats has to get it from this first Wildcats side. I would think Andy Campbell would be one of the tallest players ever to have played for Australia in the Olympic Games. This is uh, Crawford, out to Ellis, who makes the three-point attempt, and makes it well. Nice Delta. Duffelmeyer. Bang. And that's a three-pointer. 103 to 91. Alley oop pass didn't work. The pass was great. Crawford couldn't find the hole. That was a great move. He sold them the shot and then found the man under the basket. Nice pass inside by Black and Crawford goes in and stops it. Away come the Wildcats and suddenly this game has opened up. Crawford can't control it. Yes, he can. Keeps it just inside the line. Suddenly. The tempo has gone up a gear. Three-point attempt from Bruton. Pinder was in there. Crawford, he gets the man off his feet and then puts it in. Beautiful pump fake by Crawford. 
Pinder right in the corner, holds up then, Pinder. Feeds Black who drives in, gets it out towards Davis, and Davis makes good. And it's taken by Smythe. Petrella was who got it for Smythe, a three-point attempt. Oh, oh, that oh, makes things point. interesting. It's a six-point game, a minute 49 to play. He came off the screen set by Pinder, bounce pass across towards Black. This is Torrance, up the man three. is Bruton, and he gets it. That could put down the revolt. Five points to margin, 127 to 130. Steele, McEachin gives it to Smythe. Smythe down to Kennedy. Kennedy, three-point attempt, and he gets it. It's a clear seven. That's got to make the shot. Cal Bruton gets it. That's the ball game. Cal Bruton's the hero. Last quarter, outside to Darren Perry. That's sweet for three points. Cal Bruton for the Wildcats. Tries the three-point shot. The crowd like that. Bruton gets the ball. Watterson, simple shot off the glass. Just to go, the Piper is there. On their right back. And there he goes. Radliff outside, goes to Singstock. Good move for Sibley down to the baseline. The man that's done it one more time. Mike Ellis goes for the alley-oop. In fact, it was almost a, but one of the longest three-point shots you'll ever see. Mike Ellis calls Alan Black to him. Black will have to look again for Pinder and does. Torrance, James Crawford, reaching for the sky. Turnaround jump shot is sweet. So the Wildcats staying in touch. Even when the passes don't work, they work. That's <laughs> When players are having luck, they're having luck. As Ron Radliff oh. puts up a big bomb from outside. There's another scoring threat for the Wildcats, Ron Radliff. Another three-pointer. Instead, it's Leroy. That one misses. Radliff with one of his very rare rebounds. Falls back out to Shane Hill oh. for three more. I think that's four or five three-pointers for Shane Hill at this stage of the match. Cal Bruton for the Wildcats now tries his own three-pointer. And that's sweet. To Bruton. He goes with a three-point attempt and misses. Loggins has it knocked away by Black. Now he's cornered brilliantly by Pinder, who tapped it back to Black. And there's a very valuable turnover to the Wildcats. Swinging the ball around the keyway quickly. Atkinson trying to tap it in, eventually goes up with the rebound and is able to lay it up. 109 plays at 97. Five minutes 45 to play in the game. Atkinson puts the shot up and he makes no mistake. Bruton in possession. It's not being so pedantic. Watterson with the shot. Didn't even hit the rim. Well, the Wildcats fighting hard still to break the hoodoo, but they can't even break the hoodoo on shots at the moment. Ronnie Radliff streams forward. Lots of support coming. Sengstock is one of them. Using Radliff again. The forward's just eating the clock away. Taking Radliff. Cheeky oh, three-point shot. shot. This is Torrance. The shield provided by Pinder. And Torrance makes good. Just under a minute left to play now. Mike Ellis tidies up under the basket. And wow, if anything reflects the way the Wildcats have gone tonight, I guess that does. Unfortunate, not quiet. They're being exhorted to make some noise by the courtside commentator, Tony Serb. James Crawford proves there is still spring in them legs. It is underway. Kuiper opened the scoring for the Cats. Disappointing. Recent days, Kuiper, turnaround jumper. Gets the first basket of the game. And Torrance was shooting well. Across the keyway, it's with Torrance. Up goes the shot from Trevor Torrance. And then Watterson followed up with a great three-pointer. Watterson, the open man, gets it from outside. Three points. Crawford was moving steadily toward that magic 5,000 mark. Crawford, four points to his name so far. That's six. Dennis made the scores even with a three-pointer. Johnson to Dennis from just outside three points. Then the long bomb from the Cats. Ellis scores. Mike Ellis was on the end of it. Wayne McDaniel showed why he's one of the top scorers in the league. McDaniel, a couple of flakes. Cal Bruton was doing his run and stun. The ball more quickly into offence tonight as the shot goes up from Bruton. He makes good. Polk was a handful on the backboards. Set to put it up, works it nicely under the basket. Strong rebound by oh, Polk off the glass. Johnson was running hot for three pointers. by one. No pressure on Johnson. Oh. And Crawford was rebounding strongly as well. Crawford inside, outside to Bruton, a three-point attempt, and it spins out. Crawford with a strong rebound. Puts the points in the basket. That's 10.
but it was the three-pointers that were hurting the Wildcats. Again, from just outside the three-point line and he puts the Falcons back in front. Then the moment the crowd was waiting for, Crawford passes the magic 5,000 point mark. Crawford, is it here? Yes, it is. James Crawford passes 5,000 points for first hand to do so in the National Basketball League. Black, there's Watterson at the top, that's where it goes, tries the three-point shot and makes it. Hey, when you raise it for us for Melbourne. They've got the mix and match socks tonight, these Tigers. It's a little untidy. Burgess defended pretty well, but a great pass Andrew under Gaze, the basket finds two. Andrew Gaze. Yes, the Wildcats are getting to the strike because they're going inside and passing the ball like as you see that time. Paul Kuyper. Wildcats still running freely. Bullock hasn't stopped running all night. That's oh. a great shot. What a guy. Eric Watterson, Steve Davis. Great pass, James Crawford. Same at eight. Gayers, jump up. Mm. Nice one. About the try is a drop kick because he can't get a pass. Davis, Eric Watterson. Oh. Sweet as you like. So much noise in here, it's hard to pick up very much. Crawford, thank for the strong rebound. Wow, there, there, one, three, one, zone. Oh! Wayne, a rather effort, bounce past to Wayne, and he gets it from outside. This is Watterson now with Fenton. Pinder inside looking for, for Crawford. Oh, the ball bounces out. Davis. Bounce pass inside, Kuiper, three on two, Ellis lays it off to Black, four on two, the trailer is Davis, he gets it. What is it, Kuiper the low post, goes baseline, no help, and goes to the basket. Bolden has it knocked away by Fenton, recovers, no pressure on, takes the jumper, they all backed off him. Four seconds left on the shot clock, now Larkins will put it up, oh look at the hole he went through. Oh. Heavens above, seven seconds left on the shot clock, Epperson puts it up, and they missed, oh, Bolden oh, puts it back in. Fighting under the basket with Armour, Armour stays in there and the ball comes free to Bruton. Pump fake works on Armour, gets the ball back to Watterson. The three points works for Eric Watterson. Trying to get some uh, sympathy from the referees on it. Looks like he was swatting mosquitoes. Skenderis. <laughs> But Simmons drives and sinks it. Cal Bruton brings it forward. Tiny Pender, there's another flashy pass from Cal Bruton. You also guard a smaller forward who may be giving you problems. Cal Bruton under the basket, the Crawford. So Geelong have persisted with a zone defense all game. I guess they're not quite big enough to match up man to man, but the zone hasn't worked all that well. Scott Benton makes three. Hey, it's a big ocean. Can they swim? Tiny Pinder with the layup. Yes, it does. The Pinder with the rebound to Ellis. The long pass to Torrance. Ellis from outside. Three point up. Whether you can keep Leonard Mitchell or not, I, I guess is a matter for debate. Great pass, Mike Ellis. Superbly finished by Trevor Torrance. What a way to end the ball game, the Wildcats. Alan Black, a threat from outside, makes his first shot. Very on the way, gets it. Oh, but he's still standing, he's not moving. Sibley baseline. Letting the pressure. Right, Perry down, puts down, up down. a desperation right. shot. Well wide of the mark. Sibley battling for the rebound. So it's great. Oh. It's like a football match in there. So the continuation play not called. Cool. Here's Loggins, top of the key. Weak side clear out for Loggins. He goes towards the key. That was a magnificent move. Yes, it's like a heavyweight title fight at the moment. Crawford and Loggins, two of the most valuable players in the league. And that there's the two of them clashing again as the shot is rejected from Loggins by Crawford. Quickly to Ellis, the fast break, and the foul is called. Redmond goes to Atkinson. The Bullets realise they need desperate measures now. Atkinson makes the shot. Cal taking a well-earned rest on the bench. And Wallace puts up a great shot. The Bullets have a chance. They'll need a few big bombs from here to get back into the game. And here's one coming up from Shane Hill. Martin no, came up. Well, I think it came off the Wildcat. And there's a long pass down to Ellis. And he won't miss from there. There's a turnover going to the Bullets. And it's Loggins. Stopping on a set piece, but he's lost it too. Mike Ellis, who's been like a oh, What a dunk from James Crawford.
almost broke the backboard. The clock could be the bullet's enemy, but then again, the Wildcats probably are going to submit another reject from Crawford. Boggins appeals for goaltending, not that time, Leroy. Get up, get up! Peel, can't let pass. Nicely taken in, stride by Loggins. Back to what is a new block. Ball game too. That's uh, that's no, probably the end of it for the Bullets. Inside. It'll Get be John Dorge coming in, won't it? No. I think time's going to beat them. Shane Hill gets the ball into John Dorge, rejected again from Crawford. It's like a broken record as Mike Ellis howls his way down court and draws the foul. I think they're a great benefit for the NBL. A team like Perth certainly draws the crowds in. Evidence is the magnificent attendance has been at the Super Dome as Hill makes two more. Friday and Sunday next. Here's the last night. 25 seconds to go. Shane Edwards misses with a shot. And that's just been the story for the Bullets tonight. There's a turnover. One hit. Oh. Leroy Stewart's oh. right back. Oh. Getting the Australian bowl side with that one. And look at the oh. crowd. Oh. 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 Let's rub in a bit time. Game they played. Sure. Right. This is the now the go, John. Pusher misses, James Crawford takes it, they're pressing. Ellis is there to take it off him. It's a big miss because you have the odd number. The Wildcats by one, 106 to 105. The high flying Crawford gets it back to Pusher. This is Mike Ellis now. Torrance left side. Wildcats spreading the ball. The Wildcats are in their delay game now. And they'll look to run the clock down for the good shot. Got to get the shot away now. Leader got in there. Ellis didn't get the shot away in time anyway. And the referees have called a jump ball. Now watch the North Melbourne bench. They will go berserk. Oh, gee. I don't blame them. Oh. The referees didn't know whether the 30-second buzzer had gone or not. But was, the, was the ball in the air? Here you see. Now the clock is going. There was no foul on that attempt. No, there was no foul. They wanted to know whether the ball had been let go when the buzzer went. I'm sure it beat the buzzer. I'm not sure the buzzer wasn't white. They're conferring with the... They have conferred with the bench. Let's listen. It's a bench's error. So it needs to be... That's what they're saying. I think it was the bench's error. So it's a jump ball. Oh, gee, what a break. What a break for the Wildcats. I was watching the shot clock, and there's no doubt in my mind that it had expired before he let the ball go. The man going berserk on the bench is the assistant coach, Glenn Bynes, a very, very animated character in National Basketball League play. Oh, what a big call. What a big turnaround with 34.5 seconds remaining. 106 to 105. We've got to be faking overtime as well. And now we've got a jump ball. Leader and Crawford to go for the jump ball. Notice North Melbourne is in a defensive jump because they realize that JC will probably get the tip. You stay still. You don't need to lock. And you don't walk the line. It's all, all, all organized. Jeff Weeks has got a sense of humor. Yeah, Jeff Weeks has set these guys up here before. Did exactly the same last time they played here. Crawford gets it. Ellis comes out of the huddle. Leader almost fouled him. Good work though by Leader to try to get in. Bruton comes forward. Can he get the shot away? No, not this time. 22 seconds left in the ball game. Somebody's going to foul him. Graham has fouled Hal Bruton. So for David Graham, that's foul number four. Just under 19 seconds left in the ball game. Let's see it again. You see Cal is such a trap, clever dribbler. A little reaching foul that time on Graham. He leaned in his left shoulder. They've got to foul, but they've got to pick their shooter. They have to foul Ellis now. They've got to foul him. Last down to nine seconds. Well, almost the steal. It comes to Crawford. Crawford's got it. They still haven't fouled. Crawford's got it over the basket. finish 108 to 105 Steve Davis will rest easy tonight 
Well, let's and look at the finish of this game again. The pass from Bruton to Crawford. Crawford got it under the basket where Steve Davis had made just the perfect position. Look at the faces. Tiny Pender, Trevor Torrance, Steve Davis, Cal Bruton down there, diminutive. Ian Saiti has come in to join them. Dan Hickett behind him. The bench players on the Wildcats squad. The Wildcats are ecstatic. The losers are respondent. They have left the court. North Melbourne have left the court. They head back tomorrow afternoon on the same flight as the Wildcats. Okay, now we've got to really listen to Cal Bruton. I don't know whether you heard it or not, Cal Bruton said that was a great win, boys, a great win. Indeed, it was a great game of basketball. The same margin that separated these two sides last time they played at the Super Bowl. Three points it was 134 to 131 last time, 108 to 105 this time. We, we are like a family, and it's good. It's good because I have never experienced that before. For us, like a bunch of guys, 12 guys just being into one. And when you can have a team like that, with the Wildcats, I mean, I've found the perfect place, and I, you know, I've found a place where I can be as good as I can be. And. Um, you know, I think I would just keep improving over the next few years, and um, this is my home right now. My whole life, you know, is run around basketball and the moods that I'm in. It's great playing at home, there's no doubt about it. I mean, with crowds like we have, we've been having, um, they really get involved and it's, it's really good, but it does really bother me. The crowd in Perth's great, they always get behind us. Uh, last night the crowd was, I think, the telling factor in the, uh, in the fourth quarter. That's what got us going. They're a great bunch of guys, really. It's a, it's a lot of fun to be in a team and I think we couldn't train together as often as we do if it, if it weren't for the fact that everyone is. It's been terrific to go down the stadium and everyone wishes you well and uh, gets behind you. It's just terrific. Day Glenn and Michael come home and said they wanted to play basketball and he said what a sissy's game that was so um, they just um, took off with basketball and Dad got involved and read everything and picked everyone's brains that come through and just learned as much of the, as he could of the game and he just all followed through. Yeah, our crowd here at home now in Perth are so into the game, so they give you so much energy. And when you seem like, you know, you're letting the game slip, you can see and you can hear their expression, you know, coming from the crowd, you know, that, you know, we want to win, you know, so it's not like that. popularity of the sport and the, um, 
the profile has just gone straight up through the roof. Oh, I think I'll probably eat some cheese. I like everyone to thank Bob Williams for you know what he's done for the sport. It's just amazing uh, uh, how a lot of people haven't even heard of basketball. But without this man's foresight, you know they probably wouldn't be hearing about it as soon. I think eventually with the corner. Not only is he taking a big part.